Hi, I'm Jura, the time traveler, and this is my lifestyle time travel blog. And today we have another Valentine's Day special, and it is Incredible Love Life of Julius Caesar. If you want to know more about the origins of St. Valentine's Day, go to our last year's video that will be linked over here. But let's get back to Julius Caesar, the man, the myth, the legend and the playboy. He is the he was the moment. <laughs> he was probably one of the most accomplished lovers of the ancient world. And he had three wives and numerous lovers. Some of them were just short flings and others were long-term affairs. And there were also rumors for his homosexual affairs. He was so notorious for his affairs that he even ended up in a poem of Catullus where he was called an abominable sodomist, yes, amongst other things. So check out the poem. His first wife was Cornelia and he married her when he was only 16 and she was a bit younger. And they had a daughter, Julia, the only legitimate child of Julius Caesar. Cornelia was the daughter of Lutius Cornelius Cinna and he was influential Roman politician and four times consul. And the time when Cornelia and Caesar got married was the time of great turmoil in Rome. And that was the feud between Gaius Marius and Sulla. So Gaius Marius was Caesar's uncle and Cinna was his ally. So by proxy, Caesar was on his side. And because of that political influence, Caesar was appointed high priest of Jupiter. And this might all seem like a fairy tale, but unfortunately for Caesar, in that feud, Sulla won. So because of his affiliation with the old regime, Caesar was stripped off of his inheritance, of his wife's dowry, also of his priesthood, and he was forced to divorce his wife, which he refused. So he was forced into hiding and he fled Rome in disguise. So he moved from home to home, from house to house, from, I don't know, maybe some forest to forest to avoid being caught. In the meanwhile, the other part of Caesar's family, so the family on his mother's side, was on good terms with Sulla. So his family and friends were pleading for Sulla to allow him to return to Rome. He agreed, but reluctantly. But Caesar was very resourceful, so when life gave him lemons, he made lemonade. And he took this as an opportunity to start his military career, because as a priest he was not allowed to touch a horse or sleep three nights outside of his own bed or to spend one night outside of Rome. So he joined the army and left Rome to be as far away as possible from Sulla. In 78 BC Sulla died and Caesar returned to Rome. He bought a modest house in Subura, which was a lower class neighborhood in Rome, where he lived together with his wife. He was married to Cornelia until 69 BC when she sadly passed away. But that was also the year when his political career started with him being elected quaestor. In 67 BC, he married Pompeia, his second wife, Sulla's granddaughter and he slowly started climbing the political ladder. So in 63 BC, he was elected Pontifex Maximus, which is the supreme priest, and that is the title that you get for life. And in that year, he moved out of Subura and moved into official residence of Pontifex Maximus on Via Sacra on the Roman Forum. And more or less at the same time, his affair became a public thing. So his first known mistress and probably the longest relationship he had was with Servilia. Servilia was half-sister of Cato the Younger, one of Caesar's biggest opponents. And she was also the mother of Brutus, the guy that killed Caesar eventually. 
and she was a well-educated and well-connected woman coming from the Roman high society. The affair with Julius Caesar began during her second marriage to Silanus, and Silanus was a prominent Roman politician and he was also a consul in 62 BC. And apparently Silanus had nothing against this relationship. And this was the longest and the most passionate affair Caesar had. And there is an interesting story of how it became a common knowledge. So in 63 BC, during a Senate meeting, Caesar got a letter from the outside. And it was a tricky time because of numerous conspiracies. So his biggest opponent, Cato, Servilia's brother, half-brother, was suspicious of the letter Caesar received. He thought that it was information from the enemies of the state. So he told Caesar to read the letter out loud. Caesar gave him the letter to read it himself and Cato was a bit surprised by the content of the letter. It was not information from the enemies, but a love letter from his sister to his biggest enemy. So by that time, everybody in Rome knew that they were seeing each other. And Caesar was not a cheapskate when it came to Servilia, because he gave her a single large black pearl that is allegedly and reportedly the most expensive piece of jewelry of all time. He paid it 6 million sesterces which I found on Wikipedia that is equal to $1.5 billion. I don't know if it is true, but that's what Wikipedia says. And now let's get back to Caesar's second wife and the reason for his divorce. So, in 62 BC, there was a huge Bonadea festival scandal. So, Bonadea was a Roman goddess that was celebrated only by women. And that was done twice a year, once at her temple at the Aventine Hill. And the second time the hostess of that celebration was the wife of senior Roman annual magistrate. And in the year 62 BC, that was Pompeia, Caesar's wife. So that celebration was exclusively for the women of upper Roman class and they all gathered at their house at the Roman Forum. But one person saw this event as a perfect opportunity to confess his love for Pompeia. And that was Publius Claudius Pulcher. So he came up with this ingenious plan to infiltrate the celebration, dressing up as a woman. He thought that he would pass unrecognized, but it, it, it was far from it. It was far from it. He was discovered and he fled the scene. And then rumors started that there was a man at this celebration that was only for women. And Caesar believed his wife when she told him that she had nothing to do with it and that she didn't even know that Pulcher would be there. But it was a scandal because of other men. Because other men started doubting their women and their fidelity or their lack of it. Because they didn't know what was happening during that festival, they were like, okay, if Pulcher was there, maybe the other men were as well. Maybe every time that you celebrate that festival, you have some men around and that is just an excuse to cheat on us. And you know how it was in ancient Rome, there were double standards. It was okay for men to cheat, but not for women. So even though Caesar believed his wife, he divorced her because of that scandal, because he said, and I quote, Caesar's wife must be above all suspicion. As we do know, he had a side piece. Because that was at the end of 62 BC, the following year he divorced Pompeia. In 59 BC, Caesar married Calpurnia, his third wife. And she was a modest, shy woman, faithful, and she tolerated Caesar's affairs. And during the same year, Caesar became consul and he had powerful allies, Crassus and Pompey. And the three of them made this informal alliance that is known as the First Triumvirate. 
And then a lot of things happened, 10 years worth of a lot of things. Uh, Crassus died and Pompey and Caesar became enemies. So in 49 BC they started a civil war. And uh, during that civil war battle happened, battle, battle, battle. They were chasing each other around the Roman Republic. Then Pompey lost at the Battle of Pharsalus and then he fled to Egypt. Caesar heard that Pompey went south and he started chasing him. Then when Pompey arrived to Egypt, the Egyptians killed him. And several days later, when Caesar arrived to Egypt, they presented him Pompey's head and his ring. And unfortunately, probably unfortunately for Caesar, he came to Egypt at this interesting time, because there was a feud between Cleopatra and her husband Ptolemy XIII. So Ptolemy wanted Caesar on his side to aid him in this conflict, but Cleopatra had other plans. So one day Caesar had an interesting appointment. He was approached by a servant with either by some accounts a carpet and by other accounts by a laundry bag. But the content was interesting because the content of this laundry bag was Cleopatra. So when she appeared in front of Caesar to plead for his aid, for his help, she charmed him. She was not the most beautiful woman in the world, but she was extremely charismatic and she had her way with the men. She knew how to charm them and to whip them around her little finger. So Caesar decided to side with her and to help her. In the middle of his own civil war, which was still ongoing because even though Pompey was dead, his allies were not. So then he became a part of Egyptian civil war, Egyptian fight for the crown. So he was trapped by Ptolemy's troop together with Cleopatra in her palace at Alexandria. And meanwhile, this was a blessing, but also a curse. He was trapped, but he was trapped with a charismatic young woman who wanted his power and he wanted her money. But what he got was a son, Caesarion. And while he was waiting for the reinforcement, he tried to set on fire Egyptian fleet. But instead, he just burned the library of Alexandria. But then his men arrived and more or less obliterated Ptolemy's army. And Ptolemy the 13th drowned during the Battle of Nile in Nile. And Caesar and Cleopatra decided to celebrate this victory with a honeymoon. They were not married, but they went on a romantic cruise down the Nile. That lasted for about two months, by some accounts allegedly, and it was on a luxurious boat that looked more like a palace than a boat. Then Caesar had to leave, and with his leaving, his adventures, his affairs continued. Then in 46 BC, Caesar went to North Africa, and there he met Elnera, the Mauritian queen. She was the wife of King Bogart. And not much is known about their affair. We do know that Caesar was there for five and a half months and that he arrived there before the Battle of Thapsus to fight against Pompey's allies. So there was probably an awkward moment in 46 BC when Cleopatra came to Rome together with her second brother husband, Ptolemy XIV. Because at the time there were three women in Rome that had a relationship with Caesar, I mean at least three. So there was Cleopatra, there was Servilia, and there was his wife, Calpurnia. So Cleopatra came without Caesarion and she stayed at one of Caesar's palaces across the Tiber River. During that visit, Cleopatra and her husband were declared friends and allies of Roman Republic. And Cleopatra was probably still in Rome when in September of 46 BC, a temple was dedicated to Venus Genetrix at the Caesar's Forum. And that is important because a golden statue of Cleopatra was inside that temple. 
Then there was another visit of Cleopatra to Rome, which was in 44 BC, and she came together with her son Caesarion. And Caesar never actually admitted Caesarion as his son. In the eyes of public, he was illegitimate. And she was there when Caesar was killed. So she stayed in Rome for a little while after the aftermath, because she wanted to assure that Caesarion would be the heir of Caesar. But before that, Caesar had already appointed Octavian as his heir, so there was not much Cleopatra could do. So she took up her things and went back to Egypt. Thank you for watching this video, happy Valentine's Day and you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, send to all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!